I call it perfectly imperfect because a lot of it has battle, battle scars from living a life, you know, from going to a party and having wine stains along the ham to having a little drop of coffee down a polo shirt. Ewan, whatever these stories are behind the garments and the things that they tell are magical to me. Hi, my name is Jody, and I am a collector of beautiful things that have a story. I keep it all here within our little shop, uh, Glorious DS at Escolta at the Hubmake Lab. You can also find us at Common Room PH within the Power Plant Mall in Rockwell. Glorious DS, it started as a way for me to get rid of stuff. Because I know. I just collect stuff all the time and it started accumulating. Obviously, I was doing costumes, working with theater, um, doing fun styling gigs. I had looked at my, my, my closet and my room and the apartment. Everywhere I turned, there were just bins of clothing that suddenly I was like, I need to start getting rid of this stuff so I can get more stuff. <laughs> so yeah, so we did a one-week pop-up in Poblacion at Pineapple Lab. To my surprise, it was received really, really well. I met some like really amazing people that I'm still friends with now that maybe I wouldn't have met. Why Glorious Diaz? It literally, the name was supposed to be Pakipot. <laughs> I wanted it to, to feel like hard to get. That's my relationship with vintage. It's like, it's it's teasing me. It's it's, it's like Pakipot. I think that's what the word means in, in itself. Also played around with the idea of Victoria's Secret, like a Victoria's Secret, wherein when you ask people about where they got their finds, sometimes they don't want to tell you where they got their amazing vintage piece because it's their, it's their little secret, it's their little win. And each time you find a vintage item, it feels like that. It feels like a Victoria's Secret. But also, Glorious Diaz just more so resonated. It's along with my sense of humor and, of course, the first Miss Universe. I, I think playing on that and, I mean, the glory days. The glory days and it is a glorious moment when you come across a piece that resonates with you mismo. As far as like my relationship with old things and vintage, it's been lifelong. Ever since I was a kid, my parents would collect things. They would uh, go to garage sales, obviously, looking for one-of-a-kind things. My mom would look for outfits that only she had because she was scared to like go to a party, God forbid, and walk in with someone who had the same outfit as her. So she, she really loved finding unique things. And, and I, I've had vintage stores before. My first retail job was at a vintage and piercing studio and tattoo studio in Edmonton. Uh, and then I kind of went into corporate retail and then eventually went back into independent vintage retail. After closing my shop in Toronto, I didn't think I'd ever go back to vintage, but it, it really is one of those things where if you've been bitten by the vintage bug once, it just, it's with you forever. There is no vaccine for it. <laughs> I gravitate towards print, summery, bright things, either really, really kikai pretty things, either really, really sparkly things for kita level, big shoulder pads, those kinds of things. Things that are like within my wheelhouse. I mean, here it's, it's, it looks gulo, right? I wish everything was perfectly color blocked and all the patterns were like made to the same, so it's complementary. Part of the thrill of vintage is like getting through that too. Even though this is, these are pieces that I've picked, there's still that part where people want to like dig, go through it, rifle through, because that, there's that element of surprise that is part of the whole experience. Even in our online store, we don't put everything up online. Some, some of it we put here. The idea of having a physical space again felt like a huge risk. It still feels like a big risk because we've already, we're already online. People are shopping there, Sigina. But there's just something about the experience of being in to touch it that I feel is important. Is it, is, is it for me, mismo, as, a, as, a, as, a, as just uh, someone who appreciates touching things? Even if I don't have to buy it, I just want to touch it. The pop-up, when we did it, it had been like things that I had collected. Uh, I had done independent creative projects. So a lot of it was Filipiniana. A lot of it was just secondhand items. Some of it was textiles, fabric. It just needed to go somewhere else. It no longer needed to belong to me. I was ready to finally let go and also create a space, an environment where these could be appreciated. Because at the end of the day, like for me, I know that I like to collect things, but I think sharing it 
with others is the more rewarding part because it, it also has a story that needs to be passed on. And if I were to just have it for myself, medyo, medyo selfish lang yan. <laughs> Are there challenges to selling vintage? Sure, absolutely. I call it perfectly imperfect because a lot of it has battle, battle scars from living a life, you know? From going to a party and having wine stains along the ham, to having a little drop of coffee down a polo shirt, a little hole from getting snagged from jumping over a fence. Ewan, whatever these stories are behind the garments and the things that they tell are magical to me, but they're not magical to everybody. <laughs> I think there is a growing community, obviously, especially around secondhand fashion and ukai and thrifting. And then there's also a new appreciation for vintage reworks that is, is, is really encouraging. We got an invitation from 98B to be part of the Hub's Bahai Bahayan program. Uh, we were one of the first batch to try it out. And it's been off and on because there's been closures here and there. But obviously, they welcomed, up, welcomed us with open arms and we really found a home here after not having a home. So super grateful for that. And then a couple months ago, we've been wanting to do this for a while, applied as a partner for Common Room. And now we have some of our stuff there, not necessarily the vintage pieces, but more so the giftables, some of the reworks, uh, mga abubots, some like vintage craft kits, dolls. I think it's a, it's, a, it's a really interesting experience to, for us as Glorious Diaz, to not be a standalone store ever. We've always been part of something bigger than ourselves. And it's always been part of a community, I think. That as a practice has also helped me not feel alone in what I'm doing. Obviously, I'm not alone. I have, I have amazing collaborators and teammates that we do all this production. I can't take all the credit, but I think one of the things that has kept me going despite everything is the fact that we've always been surrounded by other people crazy enough to take the same kind of risks as us during these times. Fail together, succeed together, have that around you so that you aren't alone. Because I, I, it's, it's really easy to, as an independent business, to like feel the bad side of what independence feels like. My, any advice for someone who wants to do what I'm doing? Don't. <laughs> Don't do what I'm doing. Don't follow my advice. Do it your own way. Make your own mistakes. Um, no. I think the best way to learn anything is to make mistakes, right? It's, it's that first step, it's that risk, but if you feel it in your gut, run with it. And it's really important to not work alone. I think, obviously, how I've learned, I've always had a partner, I've always had a community, I've always just been surrounded, fortunately, with other makers, creatives, that not only like encourage me, but put me in my place, suggest edits, perhaps give advice, if you want to start your own initiative or, or your own business or get into something that you're not into, support those that are. You want those people who are doing it to keep going so that you can be part of that. And you're not, you're not, you're not, you're not necessarily taking anyone down. You're actually contributing to a growing movement, a growing body of people, of entrepreneurs, artists, and, and a growing industry. If you're scared to do it yourself, support the ones that are doing it now and find ways to collaborate with other people who are who you find are also creative or inspiring if you can't find a community that you want to contribute to create one around you your friends your immediate circle of creatives and other artists that that inspire and support you and that can kind of be your ecosystem while you kind of take the next step and then the next step The future is tomorrow lang. <laughs> no, um, I, can, I can see as far as tomorrow. I think lately, I've been challenging myself to be okay with the idea of staying small. Understanding that I can be in an independent business, but that doesn't mean I'm alone. I can stay small, but still be part of something big. So I want to still work slow at my own pace, but alongside many others also doing so. <laughs> but that makes sense, right? That's the hardest thing to kind of grab, wrap, wrap my head around where I'm just like, we're constantly chasing these goals that we set for ourselves, huh? We can't blame anyone except ourselves because, you know, we're go-getters, right? And we've been conditioned and trained to be like, you've reached that milestone. <laughs> the next one's here. Instead of you've reached this milestone, 
sit with it, appreciate it. Until you're ready for the next one. I didn't give myself enough time to appreciate some of the things that I was doing. And like, as I'm getting older, I'm just like, I really should have enjoyed that. When, when I had the energy to enjoy it, like to the max. Sometimes the trajectory can be straight line only. It doesn't always have to be a peak. It'll be like this sometimes too. It'll be like this too. But understanding that those milestones, the minute you've, you've accomplished something, is not a sign for you to set another one necessarily. For some people, it is. It was for me, for sure. And obviously, you get to a point where you burn out, you get, you're really frustrated. Even with results, you're frustrated. It's never enough. You're never happy. That's, I think the main thing that, that got me through this is that like, it is a day by day. It's one glorious dia at a time.